What is going on guys? Jack has got your back. Welcome back to another tier list on the channel and it's been quite some time since I've done a tier list. I want to say it's been six months, five, six months, something like that. Time just flies by. So we're going to be taking a look at the Resident Evil series. So I'm pretty sure these are all of the games as of uh, 2023. Um, hopefully there isn't ones that I have missed. Uh, we're about to see in the comment section below. Uh, when it comes to this as well, do let me know uh, if you agree with my tier list at the end. Uh, if you have like any other sort of suggestions for other tier lists in the future, uh, you know, go in the comment section below and let me know. So when it comes to the Resident Evil series, I kind of got back into the series uh, from 2017 onwards, I sort of dabbled before in the Resident Evil series, but of course the uh, the game sort of just scared the ever-loving piss out of me, so I wasn't going to be able to get through a Resident Evil game, and of course the older ones were much harder with the fixed cameras and just basically, you know, trying to find out where the hell you have to go. So enough rambling, let's try and kick off uh, this tier list. So we have the original Resident Evil. So when it comes to the original Resident Evil, I recently played this game uh, on stream a year ago or a couple of years ago. I did uh, Jill's uh, playthrough. Uh, I'll put like a little card so you can go and check it out. And uh, yeah, so this, I played it on the PS5 version when the Director's Cut got ported over to the PS5. I kind of wish there was trophies so it kind of could you know, keep me going and sort of like do Chris's story but uh, yeah I've kind of dabbled in with uh, the original game I really enjoyed going through that game uh, just some sort of like nostalgic like thing in the back of my brain was like oh I like this this is an old PS1 game and I'm sort of enjoying my childhood in a sense but uh, yeah Resident Evil the original uh, of course you had like blocky polygon uh, polygonal like characters uh, you had like, of course, the scary reveal of the first zombie, uh, sort of like slowly turning his head in that insane FMV of like the CGI at the time. And who could forget that opening of like all of the, all of the uh, the team members sort of like running across the field uh, from the dogs, the zombified dogs. And who who could forget the voice acting? The voice acting is mwah, chef's kiss peak voice acting. I'm surprised there was no awards back in the day for best voice acting and they didn't give it to Resident Evil. Um, God, where the hell do I put this in the tier list though? So I did do Jill's playthrough, um, but I didn't get around to doing Chris's playthrough. Uh, of course, Chris's playthrough is a little bit harder than Jill's playthrough. He doesn't have as many uh, slots um, that he can sort of like have in his inventory. And yeah, I just remember reading about it or seeing uh, other streamers do do it on uh, on Chris's playthrough. But where the hell am I going to put you? I really enjoyed it. I really, really did enjoy it. And I was kind of uh, thinking about going back and doing Chris's playthrough at some point. But uh, let's see where I'm going to put you. This is very difficult because I enjoyed it. But I didn't get round to actually finishing the whole package. Um, I want to say either A or B. I'm going to give it the benefit of the doubt. I'm going to put in A because I really enjoyed going through Jill's playthrough. I enjoyed the, uh, the yawn boss fight, the big snake boss fight. I enjoyed the Plant 42 boss fight. Uh, of course, the uh, Neptune, the big shark, wasn't a thing that was like in the remake. We'll get to the remake in a minute. Um, but you had like little mini sharks that were kind of like following you around. Um, you had the hunters. All the hunters were mean back in uh, back in that game. Um, yeah, Wesker, the tyrant boss fight, all good. Um, absolutely loved the original Resident Evil and definitely will get back to uh, doing Chris's playthrough at some point. Uh, right, so the original Resident Evil 2. So the original Resident Evil 2, I haven't uh, played through this game at all, but I have seen uh, streamers play this uh, game on Twitch. I've seen Ray Narvaez Jr. peak streamer by the way. I've seen him play the majority of like these uh, Resident Evil games so I know of them and I know the mechanics of them 
um but again i haven't played it or have yet to play it but of course the uh, the fmv was different the cgi was different they really uh, amped up the uh the scare factor they amped up the gameplay and just everything from resident evil 1 to 2 uh you had leon and claire uh god tier leon sex kennedy uh peak uh peak character and um yeah i mean resident evil 2 original i have yet to play it but i know of it and i know how certain boss fights uh go especially with the uh the big alligator in the sewer um oh god what was it so like uh once you come across the big alligator in the sewer you have to put like one of the propane tanks in his mouth and as soon as you shoot it in his mouth frame rate drop of about five frames everything sort of like stutters and it's just a good time <laughs> um but yeah i have yet to play it so i'm gonna put it in the not played uh need to play category because i just need i need to play it at some point i have it uh totally legally by the way on uh on a system but uh, I will get around to playing it, especially Resident Evil 3 Nemesis as well. So Resident Evil 3 Nemesis, I have uh, dabbled a little bit with it. I have played probably, I want to say, 10-15 minutes of the game. Uh, it was for another video. I think I was doing like an evolution video uh, for another channel. Um, JJ Retro. I think I was doing like evolution of uh, Resident Evil because I was doing one for Tony Hawk's. And I was I think I was doing one for Resident Evil. Uh, so I played a little bit of Nemesis. And of course the voice acting. The CGI FMV. Just mwah, peak. So good. Uh, again I've seen Ray play this on his stream. So I know of the game. I know the beats of the game. And yeah. I mean you have Jill and Carlos in this game. Instead of um, you know Claire and Leon. So Resident Evil 3 takes place the same time as resident evil 2 it's like a different story um in the same uh, town of raccoon city uh so you will go like through raccoon city you'll go through different beats from like resident evil 2 so you would go into the uh, police station uh, in some points and uh this will be like oh this is how marvin got bit by a zombie and like this is how this happened and this is how that happened so they kind of sort of retooled Resident Evil 2. It's kind of like a, a paid DLC, but like back in the day. Um, yeah, and of course you had you had um, Mr. X. Uh, Mr. X was kind of like the big tyrant that was following you around in Resident Evil 2. Uh, of course, an, an imposing figure, um, you know, chasing you down. Um, I'm pretty sure there was like a theme that was playing once he was like in the facility of like where you were. So you were always on edge and you always had to deal with like hunters, uh, was it hunters? No, lickers. You had to deal with lickers in Resident Evil 2. You had to deal with zombies, you had to deal with dogs, but you also had to deal with this unkillable force that was Mr. X. But then in Resident Evil 3, you had Nemesis and Nemesis was just a beefed up version of Mr. X. Uh, he could use uh, guns like a, like a minigun, a rocket launcher, a flamethrower, that sort of thing. Uh, and of course, he would just be chasing you down throughout the game. And you also had choices as well in Resident Evil 3 Nemesis. Um, you could either... Oh god, it's like the first encounter with Nemesis. Uh, as soon as you see him, you have like the option to either go straight inside the uh, police station and avoid the fight, or you can stay with your limited resources and try to fight Nemesis. And of course, you would get like a reward at the end. I think he drops like a box of uh, weapon parts I think or like uh, a very special like key item something like that but uh, yes I know of the game I have yet to play this properly um, I think maybe I don't know maybe October time when it's like Halloween spooky month maybe um, I will go in and play some of the older Resident Evil games we'll see uh, we will definitely see oh god Resident Evil Survivor so again I know of this game because I saw Ray play this and basically Resident Evil Survivor is, you are this guy, I forgot his name, um, yep, yeah, it's not coming to me, but, uh, he has, uh, like, temporary amnesia because he, uh, what happened, I think he had, like, a, a helicopter crash, 
and he had like temporary amnesia so he has no idea who he is and this was a ps1 fps kind of game so it was a first person shooter on the ps1 um so you had like uh, like a whole light gun sort of uh, like effect like a reticle and you had like the gun going around uh you had like your bullet count you had of course health items but yeah it was like um it was like not on rails you had the ability to like freely roam around the environment but it was an fps it was a strange bizarre uh a game compared to like what you had before with like survival horror of like uh fixed camera angles of like you go into one area of the map the camera changes, you go into like another area of the map, the camera changes, trying to keep the action uh, in this fixed area. Um, yeah, this was like following where the player was going, first person shooter, trying to deal with enemies and bosses and get to the truth of who the guy is. <laughs> uh, yeah, never played it and I don't think I ever will play it. So I, of course, will put that in that category. Uh, I don't think I'll ever ever play Resident Evil Survivor because it looks like a clunky mess. <laughs> of course this was PS1 um, so it... no, not, not for me I'm afraid. Uh, right, Code Veronica. So again I've seen Ray play this and when it comes to this game I will eventually play this. Uh, I have this still installed on my Xbox, uh, the 360 version of the game so I will get around to playing this at some point um, but again, I know of this game because I saw Ray play this. And yeah, so with this game, you play as uh, Claire, uh, Claire Redfield, and she is trying to hunt down uh, her brother. So uh, because he's missing, he's missing from uh, from Resident Evil One uh, onwards, really. And uh, it was her job to try and find him. So that's why she went to Raccoon City in Resident Evil Two to try and find Chris. But she couldn't find him. Uh, so Code Veronica sort of takes place in between like uh, Resident Evil 2 and if I'm not mistaken, maybe Resident Evil 4? It's like in between that sort of uh, that period. Um, but yeah, you play as Claire. Sometimes you play as uh, Chris. I think you play as Chris for a little bit. And uh, you play as like Steve Burnside as well. Uh, Steve Burnside was uh, another character they introduced. Um, who is only in that game. Uh, I won't give any spoilers away if you haven't played it. But of course, this is like a... Was it like a 22-year-old game? It's something like that. It came in the early 2000s, uh, Code Veronica. Um, yeah, you were on this island, and it's kind of like a testing facility, so uh, a lot of like beats from like earlier Resident Evil games, especially especially the Spencer Mansion. It kind of has that, uh, that sort of feel to it in some cases. Uh, there's a big giant worm that you have to deal with, uh, but no mentions of like any tyrants, if I remember correctly. There's like no tyrants you have to deal with. Uh, so again, I'm going to put it in this category. It's one game that I do have to play though. It's not like a game that I'm not going to play at all. Uh, right, moving on. We have... <laughs> I was about to say Ninja Gaiden though, but it's not. It's Resident Evil Gaiden. So Resident Evil Gaiden is a Game Boy Color game. Um, like again, it's like a top-down sort of uh, game. Of course, you're limited by the Game Boy Color. Does anyone remember the Game Boy Color? So many good games on that. Um, but yeah, I have never played this, but of course I know of this. It's, you know, your top-down sort of game. I think you play as Leon, maybe. Um, and you have to go find uh, Barry from like the first game. Or you may be playing as Barry, I don't remember. But um, yeah, it's like a top-down sort of like Resident Evil game. You have to go through a uh, a ship, like a, a big or like yacht, um, playing through the game. And if you come across a zombie, um, the gameplay changes and it becomes like a first-person type of deal where you have to deal with a zombie. Um, but you'll be you're given like this bar, and you have to like aim the uh the line in the uh, correct part of the uh the line so you can deal damage to the zombie and hopefully kill it it's bizarre if you haven't seen any gameplay for this i highly recommend that you do so because it's bizarre um but yeah i have never played this and i don't think i will ever play it 
Um, oh, same with uh, Resident Evil 2 Survivor. Never played it. But uh, Resident Evil Survivor 2. So this looks like the sequel. It looks like Steve Burnside. Because, yeah, that's kind of like the, the golden guns he uses. And it kind of looks like uh, Steve. Um, I know nothing of this game. I don't know what it is. I didn't even realize there was a sequel to Survivor. But uh, I'm going to put it in there. Not for me. <laughs> uh, right, so now we come to Resident Evil Remake. So Resident Evil Remake was originally uh, released on the GameCube uh, back in 2002. 2001, 2002, something like that. Um, and yeah, so this was like a remake of the original Resident Evil game. So um, yeah, when it comes to this game, they improved on certain uh, gameplay factors. Uh, they introduced uh, Lisa Trevor, I think her name is Trevor, but I just remember Lisa, uh, who kind of is like an imposing force that is in certain areas of the map. She's not in like all areas of the map trying to chase you down. Um, she's in like in certain areas, especially the underground and like outside of the, uh, the Spencer Mansion. Um, but yeah, it's a faithful remake and if I'm not mistaken, this got like um, accolades of being like one of the best remakes of like all time and it was like beloved by everybody. Uh, so much so that it got ported to everything. I'm not mistaken, it, it came out on PS2, possibly. Um, it definitely came out on PS4, PS5, uh, Xbox 360, uh, Xbox One, everything. It got ported on everything. Um, I loved it. I played through this game uh, not too long ago. Um, and I also played it whilst I was playing with a friend as well. So he was playing through it at the same time as me. So we were sort of like trying to figure out puzzles together. Um, if I would figure something out, I would tell him. Um, so we would sort of like keep up with each other. And if he knows something, he would tell me. So we'd keep up with each other. Um, it's a very good game if you're doing it like that way. Uh, it's like a co-op experience. Uh, I have yet to go through Chris's playthrough again, Chris's playthrough, um, with him. Uh, we're gonna try and set up a, like a, a play date, <laughs> uh, to do that. But, uh, yeah, again, I played through just, uh, Jill's campaign, not Jizz's. I played through Jill's campaign, um, in the remake and again, loved it. And I kind of got like a, a feeling of like, oh, so they changed this and they've improved on this section. And this works so much more better th in the remake than it does in the original and like that sort of thing. Uh, especially when they've introduced uh, Neptune as well, which is like the big massive shark that you have to deal with uh, in a puzzle. Um, but yeah, again, absolutely loved it. So I'm going to put it in the A category with its uh, grandfather of like the original <laughs> Um, but yeah, I'm going to give it an A. It, uh, it definitely fits there. Alright, Resident Evil Zero. So Resident Evil Zero, I'm going to put it in the not played, uh, need to play category. So, uh, again, this was part of a bundle that I bought on Xbox. Uh, it was Resident Evil Remake and Zero in like a bundle. Um, I have yet to play through Resident Evil Zero. Uh, I know of it because, again, I've seen like uh, streamers play this before and I know of the mechanics of the game and it kind of puts me off playing the game. Um, when it comes to this game, you play uh, through a number of locations, a train, uh, yeah, a train, a, uh, a facility and something else. Um, but yeah, this game introduces the co-op aspect of uh, of the resident evil series so you'll be in charge of two characters at the same time but when it comes to item management they got rid of the item box and that is the one thing that is putting me off playing through this game because when it comes to the resident evil games it's a staple you have like an item box where you can store key items or you can store items that need to be used later on um, if you come across them early, you know, that sort of thing. Item management of, like, ammo, health, guns, that sort of thing. But when it comes to this game, Resident Evil Zero, they got rid of the item box. So your uh, inventory is shared between two characters. Um, again, that's the only thing that's put me off playing through this game because I think I saw 
uh, I saw Ray play through Resident Evil Zero, and he got to this part where you're about to fight this big giant bat in the uh, the facility. And what bas what he basically did was that he put everything on the floor because you can drop items, and I don't think they do spawn. They, he sort of just dropped his items on the floor, and he was sort of like going through like what he was going to take uh, going into this fight, and like what should be left there um, for the future. Again. That's the only thing that's putting me off playing through this game. I don't know if I'll ever get around to doing it, but uh, a good friend of mine, he uh, played through this game um, and he said the exact same thing of like the item management of like no item box is going to throw you off. Um, but I might play it at some point. Uh, we'll see in the future. But yeah, we'll see. Uh, right, what's this one? Dead Aim? Uh, I know nothing of it. Uh, Resident Evil Outbreak, no nothing. I think this is this other game as well. So yeah, these three games I know nothing of uh, at all. So I'm just going to put them there, save everybody's time. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna pop them there. Right, this next game, uh, Resident Evil Four. This might piss a lot of people off, um, but I have not played the original Resident Evil Four. I know it's a travesty. How could I say such? incriminating words i'm probably gonna get you know youtube swatted by youtube at some point but uh yeah i have never played the original resident evil 4 i think all i did in the original resident evil 4 was uh ring the bell and then i stopped <laughs> um yeah i don't know what it is about the original resident evil 4 at the time i couldn't get into it uh, I played it on PS2 originally, like with my cousin, because I was watching my cousin play through it on the original PS2, and I was like, "Oh, this looks scary AF, I'm not going to play this. <laughs> and uh, then, of course, when it comes to Resident Evil 4, it's, by, it's beloved by so many people that it kind of got like the Skyrim effect of like, it got ported to everything, literally everything. <laughs> Um, so of course it came out on you know PS2, PS3, I think PS4, PS5, all the Xboxes. I think it got ported to the Wii as well, uh, PC, uh, Stadia, the Google Stadia, I think as well. There's like a VR game as well of the original Resident Evil 4. Um, yeah, it got ported to everything. So I do have it on uh, on Xbox. Uh, I will get around to playing it at some point. Because uh, now that I've played the remake of Resident Evil 4, I might do the original at some point. Oh no. Um, <laughs> I'm going to put it there. I'm going to put it in the uh, not played category because I played like 10 minutes of it. And if I put it in the uh, in the F category, I'm going to piss off a lot of people. Uh, so I'm going to put it there because I didn't put enough time into it. But I will at some point just go through the game. And experience the original because I have played the uh, the remake. Uh, right, I think I see the two Chronicles games. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put both uh, Chronicle games uh, in the not played category because they are on the uh, PS Plus uh, subscription service. They are there as like the PS3 games. Uh, I will get around to playing those at some point. I really will because they do look uh very unique and they look interesting uh basically what they are they're like uh on rail shooters just going through like different uh chapters and different games of the resident evil series um but yeah at some point i'll play those because they're on the ps plus uh subscription service they're there they're just waiting to be played uh so i will play them at some point absolutely uh, right, Resident Evil 5. So Resident Evil 5. This is a pretty amazing game if you're playing with a co-op partner. <laughs> if you're playing with somebody, it's an amazing time. I really liked it in that sense. Um, yeah, so in this game you play as Chris Redfield uh, in Africa. And you also have like a co-op partner in Shiva. Uh, it's kind of like your... your Cop go-to partner that uh, your your friends could be playing with you at the same time with um but yeah this game was great like you have to deal with not traditional zombies they're called los Lagos, i think they are well that could be in resident evil 4 anyway it's the Plagas, something like that it's like a, a parasite that sort of goes into different people 
and it creates like a running kind of zombie that could fight back with like weapons and stuff um yeah there's like boss fights with wesker in there and of course you have the infamous chris <laughs> chris redfield punching a boulder uh to smithereens i mean who thought of that up i applaud you for that it's a great scene uh in the middle of a volcano trying to deal with wesker um it's a very very good time uh but yeah as a co-op game playing it with a friend it's great yeah i'm gonna put it in the s in the s rank i really liked it as a co-op game i can't imagine playing through the game like as a single player um but with my experience playing through it co-op uh, cooperatively with a with a partner and just having a good time having a, a crack you know with him and like just laughing through playing through the game and going through like the different uh story beats with him it's it's a very good time so i will put it in the s rank uh what the hell is this what is that resident evil the oh the mercenaries 3d something tells me this is like a nintendo 3ds game call me crazy uh i didn't own a 3ds it's gonna go there never played it know nothing of it um if it's the mercenaries which looks like the the title is i'm assuming it's going to be like round based with different characters you have to deal with different types of enemies you have to get points in a time limit if it's anything like mercenaries in like uh, resident evil games um yeah I'll, I'll put you there and i don't i don't intend to play through that game never uh, what is this one? Oh, Resident Evil Revelations. Oh boy. <laughs> um, Resident Evil Revelations. I mean, I don't mind it. I have played a little bit of it, but I have to get around to getting through the game at some point. But when it comes to this game, it's not really grabbing my attention as much as like the other Resident Evil games. I think I have to do the whole play through it with a friend at the same time um like we did in resident evil remake i might have to do that but um yeah it just didn't really grab me as much as like the other resident evil games uh, that are coming up in this list um yeah i know you play as jill i think you play as jill in this one and you're on a boat um and you have to deal with like these goop monsters there's hunters in it as well you play as different characters as well i mean it's it's a whatever resident evil game i think when it comes to revelations and like that era of resident evil games they were sort of like figuring out what the hell they were doing with the series and not doing good judgment with some of their uh, with some of their games um i'm gonna put it there in the b category it's like average for me I would need to play through it with a friend, like at the same time, just so I'm not bored out of my mind whilst I'm playing through it. But uh, yeah, I'm going to put it in the uh, the B category. <clears throat> Absolutely. Uh, oh, Resident Evil Operation Raccoon City. So when it comes to this game, we do have it on the 360, uh, on the Xbox. It is backwards compatible as well. Um, I will play through this at some point cooperatively, maybe for a stream. Uh, with my friend of mine, with a good friend of mine. Uh, we have yet to play through this. But uh, again, I know of this one. And you play as like an umbrella core uh, like team. Uh, playing through the events of Resident Evil 2 and 3, if I'm not mistaken. So there is Nemesis in there at some point. Um, and like a tyrant as well. But um, yeah, it's like a cooperative shooter. I remember seeing a lot of coverage for this back in the day. Uh, especially with like IGN and does anyone remember like the uh the machinima series of bite me back in the day it was like uh like what happens if like the zombie apocalypse happened with like a bunch of gamers who played nothing but dead rising and they know what to deal with uh they know how to deal with like zombies because they played dead rising um yeah I remember those guys playing through operation raccoon city yeah I remember them playing through it but uh, it will have to go into here sadly because I have seen it and I know of the game and I will eventually play through it at some point absolutely uh, Resident Evil 6 
Hmm. I'm going to put it in the C category. I'll tell you for why. So Resident Evil 6 is like the whole controversial Resident Evil game, right? So this game is super long with its chapters. There is three or four different stories in the game. Um, it's like a collection of like all these different Resident Evil characters. You have like Leon, Ada, uh, Chris, and then you have like uh, Wesker's son. Uh, I think his name was Jake, and you have Sherry from like Resident Evil 2 as well is in this. Um, so it's just like a whole clusterfuck of different Resident Evil characters in one game. Um, and yeah, like there are like different multiple stories. The stories take forever. Like there is a chapter that takes a rough, like roughly around two and a half hours just to beat. And that's just a chapter. That isn't like the whole story. Um, yeah, I mean, it's meh. It's like meh for me. So when it comes to this game, you have to play it cooperatively. You cannot play this game single player. Otherwise, you're going to have a bad time. And it's just going to be boring as all hell. So if you can find a co-op if you can find a co-op partner that is crazy as you and is mad enough to do it like you, great. <laughs> uh, that's all I can recommend when it comes to Resident Evil 6. You need to have a co-op partner whilst you're playing through this game. Um, and of course, when it comes to the six in the logo, it looks like a giraffe getting blown by a woman. If you look at that uh, logo, you won't be able to unsee it. Um, thank you, internet. But uh, yeah, I'm going to put it in the C category. It's not F for me. It's not a failure for me. You, It will be an F if it was single player. I put it as a C because I'm with a co-op partner playing through the game. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to put it there. Uh, Revelations 2. I have yet to play through Revelations 2 because, again, it was like a bundle with Revelation, Re Re yeah, Revelations 1 and 2. There was a bundle on Xbox, so I bought it. Um, but yeah, as soon as I beat uh, Resident Evil Revelations, I will get around to doing Revelations 2. Um, I know that it's like episodic as well, like there's different episodes with Revelations 2. It's bizarre. Um, but yeah, again, I will get around to playing through it once I beat through uh, Re Revelations 1. Absolutely. Uh, right, Umbrella Core. F. Um, yeah, what... All I can say is, with Umbrella Core, Go and look at gameplay a bit. Enough said. All right, now we get to the uh, the juicy stuff. So when it comes to these remaining Resident Evil games, I have played through them religiously. <laughs> um, absolutely love these games that are coming up. So you can kind of uh, guess where most of these are going to go. All right, Resident Evil 7 Biohazard. So this is the game that got me back into the series. Um... When it came to the Resident Evil series, I was kind of on and off with the uh, the whole series. I was like, yeah, I'll play through the game a little bit, but it's not enough to grab my attention, that sort of thing. Um, but as soon as Resident Evil 7 came around, with the coverage that I saw of the game and like playing through the demo of the flashback, I think it was the flashback demo, something like that. It was in the, the guest house. Um, I just fell in love with it instantly so when it came to this game um you know it was like a whole breath of fresh air for the series it went to it went back to survival horror because when it came to resident evil 4 onwards it was becoming more of like an action horror kind of game like an action adventure horror kind of game um but whereas resident evil 7 is concerned it became like uh, survival horror it sort of went back to its survival horror roots and it was first person as well, like a first person view. Um, so you couldn't see your character. Um, yeah, this game, I eventually beat it as well because I was sort of like on and off with it as well, but not as bad as like the other uh, Resident Evil games leading up to that. Um, yeah, so you play as Ethan Winters in this game and you have to try and find, oh no, you got like a message from your wife, Mia, that you presumed like was dead or like missing completely for like three years or like two years three years something like that and uh yeah you got a message from her from out of the blue saying that she was like in louisiana so the good husband that you are 
uh, you go down to Louisiana uh, and you try and find her. And then you come across the Baker family. So the Baker family, crazy bunch of assholes, crazy fuckers in that household. Uh, you have Marguerite Baker, you have Jack Baker, Lucas Baker, and then you have uh, Granny. Granny Baker. Um, yeah, Jack Baker is an absolute monster. He's an absolute animal. He is kind of like your tyrant throughout the game. Uh, he chases you in the first portions of the game. Uh, and then you have like multiple boss fights with him. He is crazy, by the way. Um, and then you have to like deal with Marguerite, who is like a crazy bug lady that she has like spiders and wasps. Uh, she has like a crazy gooch as well. Uh, that was an interesting boss fight. Yeah, then you have to deal with like Lucas's like saw funhouse party puzzle type of games that he deals with. You have to deal with mold monsters. Uh, you have to deal with like a, a creepy little girl as well called Evelyn. Uh, who is like the whole cause of this by the way. Uh, Evelyn causes like a whole like mold outbreak uh, on the Baker family. Uh, that causes the Baker family to go crazy and more evil uh, and that sort of thing. But that's why like the Baker family is just crazy because of this whole mold incident. But uh, yeah, this game was pretty good. I'm not going to lie. I did like Resident Evil 7. I did. Uh, the DLC was good as well. I haven't played through the DLC. All I've done is like the main game and a little bit of Madhouse difficulty. I won't go into Madhouse difficulty because you need to have, you know, you need to have done like multiple playthroughs to get like uh, the circular saw and like some other guns as well. Uh, but yeah, I'm gonna put it in the A in the A category. I did like Resident Evil 7. Um, but yeah, when it comes to like most of these Resident Evil games, it requires you to play uh, through different playthroughs of the same game. Um, so that's how you get like the replay factor of all these Resident Evil games. Because if you, for instance, beat uh, Resident Evil Remake, let's say, in like a, a really good time of like under three hours or four hours, something like that, uh, you get like an infinite rocket launcher. And if you beat uh, Resident Evil 2 Remake uh, in a good time, you have like an infinite rocket launcher as well and that sort of thing. So you, it requires multiple playthroughs, but the games are so good and they're so engaging that you just want to keep playing through them over and over again just to see if there's anything that you've missed. Uh, you can play through it in like a different perspective as well with like these different weapons that you've unlocked. So it's just a great replayability it's like a great replay yeah it has like really good replayability this series uh especially like these other games that are coming up as well resident evil 2 remake uh for me resident evil 2 remake is a phenomenal game it's outstanding um i absolutely love resident evil 2 remake uh that i played through it multiple times and it's one of those games that i will like never get bored of it's kind of like uh, grand theft auto vice city uh yeah sure that game is like 20 years old but i never get old of vice city because of its re replayability its setting uh its mechanics uh storytelling just overall atmosphere uh it goes with the same with resident evil 2 remake i absolutely love this game to death uh, so much so that I'm only missing like four achievements in uh, remake. Uh, two of them are, uh, yeah, two of them are a DLC of like you have to shoot all the raccoon statues in the DLC, and you also have to get through the sheriff DLC, uh, which is like you have to survive a hundred waves of zombies in like the first gas station section. Uh, those are the only two achievements from the DLC I'm missing. Uh, the other achievements that I'm missing, I don't actually remember, but I did for Survivor. Uh, for Survivor was a mode that you got for beating uh, both campaigns of Leon and Claire. Uh, and I think even like the other one as well. So you have to do scenario A and B for Leon and Claire, and then you have to like reverse it. So you have to do Claire's A and Leon's B. So you have to do like four playthroughs just to get like Hunk's uh, like for Survivor mode. And I beat that, <laughs> so 
Uh, I also have like a video of that as well. I will post a uh, like a, a card so you can go and see it as well. Um, but yeah, I absolutely love uh, Resident Evil 2 Remake. Uh, it improved on so many things from the original. Uh, again, from what I've seen from the original. And it was just an overall good time. I absolutely loved Resident Evil 2 Remake. Uh, I'm going to give it the S rank. I have it on uh, PS5 as well. And it's a fresh account as well. So I might go back to Resident Evil 2 Remake on the PS5 as well. And play through it on that. <laughs> and get some trophies. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to put it in the S rank. It deserves... It deserves S rank for me. Uh, right. Resident Evil Resistance. So, uh, Resident Evil Resistance came out at the same time as Resident Evil 2 Remake. It was kind of like... Oh no, did it? No, Resident Evil Resistance was like a, an add-on to Resident Evil 3 Remake. So, Resistance was a complete multiplayer experience with like other players. And it kind of plays like... Uh, Dead by Daylight uh, in a sense. So you have like a group of survivors uh, that need to get from point A to point B like to try and escape uh, but you have to deal with like another uh, like another player that is playing as like the tyrant for example. Um, so you can have like a nemesis following you or uh, Mr. X following you. Uh, that would be like the other player and the other player would have to sort of set up traps and place uh, like zombie locations to try and uh, like thwart your plans to try and escape. On paper, it sounds great. It sounds like a really, really good time. Execution wise, it was flawed. <laughs> it was um, it was great in it was great for like a day or two. It's not like one of those multiplayer games where you could just keep playing. And it's like, oh, it's like exciting and new every time you keep playing it. I mean, it is what it is. Uh, I'm going to put it in the uh, the C category. Um, it's good for a couple of goes, for a couple of days. Um, if you can try and boost the achievements or trophies with like a group of people, that would be cool. Um, I don't even know if the servers are still up for Revelations. I have all Resistance. Yeah, Resistance. I'm getting my RE's mixed up. Um, yeah, I don't know if the servers are still up for uh, Resistance. Uh, if they are, highly recommend going and getting like a group of players together to try and boost the achievements so you're done with that game. Uh, so you never have to see it again. Um, yeah, I'm going to get it to the C, uh, the C category. So it's below average. It's just there. Alright, Resident Evil 3 Remake. So again, this is like another controversial type of game. Uh, because when it comes to Resident Evil 3 Remake, it feels like it should have been like uh, DLC tacked onto Resident Evil 2. Um, but saying that, I still enjoyed Remake uh, 3 Remake. Uh, again, it sort of takes place in and around Resident Evil 2, uh, but in this continuity of the Remake's continuity. Um, but when it comes to this game, instead of like... Uh, instead of like improving and adding stuff, they removed stuff. So there was supposed to be like a whole clock tower section uh, from the original. And there was like another boss fight with a worm, I think, as well in, re in uh, the original three. Uh, of course, they got rid of like the clock tower, uh, some of the boss fights, some of like the interactions with characters in Remake. They got rid of a lot of stuff, and of course that pissed off a lot of people. But uh, with me going into the series, I never replayed really 3 original. Uh, so my only interaction with 3 was the remake. Uh, but now of course seeing what people are pissed off with, I can now see why it's not as good as 2 remake. Uh, it's, it should have been like, like paid DLC tacked onto Resident Evil 2. Uh, there was talks back in the day uh, that we were going to get like a DLC pack of uh, for Resident Evil 3 Remake uh, that was going to include uh, stuff they've uh, they've gotten rid of. So there was going to be like a whole like clock tower like story tacked onto it as well. 
Uh, I still remain hopeful for that. I still remain hopeful that we will get some sort of news or it will happen. I doubt it, but uh, it'll be good if that still happens. But I mean, it is what it is. But when it comes to this game, I'm only missing two trophies, uh, two achievements. Uh, I have to do a playthrough with getting all of the collectibles, like the, the bobbleheads and the, the files. And I also have to do a run where I have to uh, not use the item box at all. Um, it can be done. Uh, it's like in Resident Evil 2 Remake, there were achievements similar to that, like not using the item box. And in Resident Evil 2 Remake, there was one for completing the entire game in 14,000 steps or less. And I was very close. I was very, very, very close uh, to not getting that. But uh, yeah, Resident Evil 3 Remake, I liked it. I'm going to put it in the A category. So it just misses that S rank because it should have been like paid DLC. It shouldn't have been like a like a, a game by itself. It should have been like paid DLC. Uh, so not asking for full price as well. I think it was like £40 or £50, something like that. Uh, it should have been at least £35, something like that. Because... Again, it was missing a lot from the original, um, but I still had a really good time with it. Especially if Inferno difficulty was a pain in the ass, especially at the end there. Uh, right, Resident Evil Village with big mummy milkers. Uh, right, so when it comes to Resident Evil Village, again, I really liked this one. Uh, I, this takes place after Resident Evil 7, and you play as Ethan Winters again. But this time, instead of uh, having to find Mia, your wife, you have to find Rose, your daughter. <laughs> so, Rose is very special. I won't give like any spoilers away just in case you haven't played it yet. But um, yeah, you have to go find Rose, who is very special to the whole story. And of course, Ethan is very special. Everybody is special in the Winter household. Um, you have to go to this, uh, this village uh, that sort of has like beats and it plays tribute to Resident Evil 4 um, and then you have to sort of like get through like lichens uh, they're kind of like your zombie type of uh, enemies like your little grunt enemies throughout the game uh, of course they're like mutated like werewolf villagers uh, you have to deal with and then you have to deal with are they called like the four the four lords they're called like the four lords uh, these are characters that have been experimented on um, through different viruses that the main big boss, uh, Lady Miranda, has been dealing with. Um, again, no spoilers, just in case you haven't played it. But uh, yeah, the, the gameplay was great. Again, it was first person. Uh, but like later down the line, they introduced like third person uh, perspective in like a DLC that was coming up. And again, it adds like a completely new perspective to the game and it plays, I would say, maybe better in some cases. Because I did prefer playing through third person. I did a whole playthrough on that just in case you wanted to go see it. I'll put again like a, a, a card so you can go see it. And they, I also played through the DLC, the Shadows of Rose DLC, uh, which, play, which takes place after the events of uh, Resident Evil 8. Uh, a couple of... A lot of years like into the future when Rose is like a teenager at this point uh, kind of closes up that story for uh, for Ethan and everybody in that uh, that series and it kind of makes me uh, interested it kind of makes me excited to see where they're gonna go for Resident Evil 9 uh, hopefully with Resident Evil 9 what they're gonna be doing is they're gonna be bringing back old characters and they can sort of like wrap up that trilogy if they wanted to. That'd be amazing if they could bring back like Chris, Blair, Leon, everybody. That'd be great. Even Jill. Bring them all back. <laughs> uh, but yeah, coming back to Resident Evil uh, 8 Village. Yeah, I'm going to put it A uh, with Resident Evil 7. I did enjoy that game and it has like a lot of like aspects from uh from resident evil 4 with like the whole duke section of like the the duke get being your um your store so you can buy gun attachments uh, you can do recipes for the food so you can get more uh more increased stats for your for your uh character 
Um, yeah, and of course, it, it kind of felt like open world in a sense because you're given this village and you can like freely explore as you go. Uh, and as you keep picking up like uh, keys and different uh, emblems that you can use, uh, the map just opens up even more. You can go find treasure. You can deal with much stronger enemies if you want to. Um, yeah, it's a top-notch game. I really did enjoy my uh, my time with Resident Evil Village. Right, Resident Evil, we're almost there, guys. Uh, Resident Evil Rebirth. So again, this was kind of tacked on with Resident Evil 4 Remake, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, this came out before. Now I'm really confused. <laughs> I think Resistance came out with 2. No, Resistance came out with 3. And Reverse came out with 4? I don't remember. Because I remember Reverse got pushed back so many times because of delays and glitches and bugs they had to deal with. Um, it shows, by the way. So Reverse, again, is like a multiplayer-focused game um, where multiple different players uh, play as different Resident Evil characters throughout the uh, uh, throughout the series. So you have like uh, Chris, Ada, Claire, Jill, uh, Leon. You have like everybody there. Um, and then once you get like a certain enough kills or points against other players, uh, there'll be like a pickup on the map that uh, comes up and you can be like a tyrant. So you can be Nemesis, uh, Mr. X and also Jack Baker. You can be like all these different characters uh, in this multiplayer focused game. Uh, I played through it twice. <laughs> um, yeah, as soon as that game came out, I downloaded it, I installed it, I played it with friends. Um, and then like the achievements started popping and popping and popping and popping. So the achievement list isn't difficult. Uh, again, I highly recommend boosting with other people uh, like uh, Resistance. Uh, again, I don't know if the servers are still up for Reverse, but if they are, I highly recommend, uh, you know, boosting with players. This game had a battle pass, by the way. This game had a battle pass. Um, again, it's good for a couple of goes. It's good for a couple of, like, laughs with friends. But it's not as good as Resistance. In my eyes, anyway, it's not as good as Resistance. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna put it as an as an F. It's um, I got a lot more uh, replayability in that sense with uh, Resistance than I did Reverse. I had a much better time with Resistance than I did Reverse. Um, yeah, so I, I put it there. Definitely put it there. And now we come to Resident Evil 4 Remake. So, when it comes to Resident Evil 4 Remake, I bought it because I was like, I love 2 and 3 Remake. So, I assume good things for Resident Evil 4 Remake. Yeah, sure, I haven't played the original and I don't know what the hell is going to be happening. Um, but, when it comes to the Resident Evil 4 Remake, again, mwah, chef's kiss, so good. I enjoyed my time with Resident Evil 4 Remake. I'm actually planning on going and playing the original Resident Evil 4. Um, just to see what I've missed and see if, like what the differences are, what they've changed, that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, Resident Evil 4 um, improves on a, upon a lot of things and adds a lot of things as well. And uh, like the DLC as well, like we got recently with Separate Ways, they added a lot of story elements that were, again, ripped from the main game or the original Resident Evil 4 and they put it in the DLC. So, like, there was supposed to be a boss fight with something called U3. I think it was called U3. It was like a, it was like a Verdugo uh, variant. Um, yeah, with like a big massive tail. Uh, that was nowhere to be seen in the main game for Remake. So what they did was they put it in separate ways. And you had like a fight with Ada against U3. Um, so it was amazing. I loved the DLC. I loved the main game uh, You had the merchant, you know, what are you buying? What are you selling? You had the merchant which again? He was just a, a Fantastic character. It's a bit of a shame that they changed the voice actor because you know It, it, it is what it is, but they changed the voice actor uh, He would give you quests that you can do throughout the chapters of the game 
uh, you know, taken down this big massive fish that's in the uh, the lake, or take out this. <laughs> Oh god, the regenerators. Take out this alpha regenerator in like the lab section and he is surrounded by regenerators. Don't get me started on regenerators. They are freaky as shit. Uh, especially in the remake as well. They made them even more terrifying in the remake. Especially when everything is pitch black and you have to use your torch and you just see one like sort of dart across the, the door frame to like the other room. Nah, not for me. Especially when you take out their legs and they sort of like flop on the floor and they start jumping towards you with their massive teeth. Not for me. Um, but yes, I did enjoy Resident Evil 4 Remake. Um, just as I did with Resident Evil 2 Remake. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to put it in the S rank. Uh, I have yet to go through like the harder difficulties with uh, 4 Remake. Uh, I'm still working on the achievement, uh, the achievement list for that game. But uh, yeah. That is my list, guys. That is my list of all the Resident Evil games from its in uh, from its inception all the way up to last year, and of course the uh, future remains very bright for the Resident Evil uh, series. I don't even know what they're going to be doing uh, as the next remake. A lot of people are speculating it's going to be Resident Evil 5 remake. Uh, purely for the fact is is that there's like a uh, a chapter in Resident Evil 4 remake. Uh, where you're playing with Luis uh, in the mines uh, and there's like a whole section where you're like together because most of the game you're by yourself in the mine section you're with Luis so there's like that co-op aspect at play there and Luis can give you ammo and uh, health items if you're running out and you can accept them from your co-op partner so they're kind of teasing the fact is that there could be like a co-op aspect uh, in play there. So the remake next could be Resident Evil 5 remake. I'm hoping it's going to be Code Veronica instead. Um, I'm with the guys that want Code Veronica to be the next remake. Um, purely for the fact is like it needs to get love. <laughs> I feel like Ro uh, Code Veronica doesn't get enough love considering it's uh, you know beloved by a few people. And, um, yeah, I need to play through Veronica at some point as well. But, uh, yes, guys, thank you all so much for stopping by. Again, let me know in the comments section below if you agree with my list, disagree with my list. Um, and, again, you may have played, like, the original 2 and 3, Veronica. You may have even played Survivor. I know you have played the original 4, though. I know many have played the original 4. But, um, yeah, let me know in the comment section below your tier lists uh, or your suggestions for future tier lists um, this has been a blast coming back to this series I I was going to do Resident Evil at some point for the tier lists like I wanted to play a bit more uh, Resident Evil games before I did but uh, I really wanted to make one so I'm, I'm doing it now uh, thank you again guys for stopping by if you liked what you're seeing go ahead subscribe and also ring that bell stay notified when I go live when I do post more videos in the future and stay safe and as always I'll catch you in my next video stream or whatever take care guys have a good one thank you again guys for sticking right to the end if you liked this video go ahead and check out my previous upload right up here and also if you want to see something completely random check out this video right here and you see this little circle right here click it do it thank you again guys and I'll catch you in the next one peace out